So to give you a couple of examples of organizations that I think are really moving forward with a fantastic demonstration of organizational performance based on them having a cause. And as I mentioned yesterday, my definition in this case or this instance of cause is where purpose meets action. So you have a clearly defined organizational purpose and as you apply action to it, now you have a cause. So despite the fact that you know, I typically work and our organization typically works with corporates. The two organizations I'm gonna to mention today are both not-for-profits, but both those not-for-profits have very strong synergies and similarities to corporate entities. So one is Paul Dunn's better, well, it's not a better, should be. Paul, let's talk. Be one, G one. Buy one, give one. So what Paul's achieved in a relatively short period of time with B1G1 is an enormous step towards progress on the global development goals. And B1G1 is all around this notion of when business transactions, business events occur, that something great happens. You know, a donation goes out and is applied to something very, very specific. And essentially they tie it all back to this clear, you know, sort of values driven message that as a B1G1 customer, which we are, which 4i is, you know, you can say to your team, you can say to your customers, you can even say to your suppliers if you so wish, you know, when we do something, something else, which is far more valuable in many ways, happens. You know, so we send a, you know, sort of a, a, a prop to a customer, you know, somebody in a different part of the world, you know, gets a day's education. You know, or we get an invoice paid, someone else in the world gets a week's clean water, that kind of thing. So I think that that kind of cause in B1G1 allows all of their customers, sponsors, if you must, um, you know, to have a cause, to attach purpose to action. And there can be this very clear link between we do this because we believe that, therefore this is what happens, purpose and action. The other one is book, you ready? Read this. I got this for Christmas from one of my team. Thank you, Kate. And it's fabulous. So Habitat for Humanity builds homes for people who are unlikely to ever be able to afford their own. And Jonathan Reckford, who's a CEO, you know, takes takes this view that you know the, the, this modality of service and the action that the volunteers at Habitat for Humanity have is so constructive and so productive as they return to society. Yes, the work that they do on the ground and the homes that they build, those are magnificent and generous endeavors. But if you look at what they, they benefit from, what the volunteers benefit from, it's so much larger than that. And they really are creating leaders. And if you go and talk to our EVP of the USA, being a president, of course, has to be in the USA, Dr. Tom Allen Livermore, he'll tell you exactly that. Tom volunteered for Habitat for Humanity years ago. And that experience really gave him a pivot point and allowed him to move into a modality of purposeful service, which he now applies organizationally for us at 4i with corporate customers in the States and, and, and globally. So I, I, I hope that makes sense that even though I'm talking about not-for-profits, this is absolutely something that many successful businesses are moving towards this notion that if they have a purpose that's bigger and better than them, they're going to outperform. And I'll leave you with this thought. BCG produced a report last year which essentially said that the companies that they analysed were more than twice as likely to have an above average stock valuation if they were pursuing a clearly defined purpose. BCG saying it far more concisely than me, of course.